so I'm not going to measure our spirituality by whether that glory cloud shows up again. That, that wouldn't be fair for him or for us, because yeah. he may be doing something different. I just want more. Mm -hmm. I, I'm not looking to be wowed, but I'm looking to be changed. So one of the manifestations that we experienced was the glory cloud. It's about mm -hmm. 2011, and this, uh, this glitter-like substance was just kind of up along the ceiling, kind of moving in the, the air currents of the room, but not all the air currents of the room that we could see. Like, I remember being mesmerized by that and also flabbergasted. Just, yeah, totally. I had no, I had no words. I had no, like, I, my brain couldn't compute what's happening in that moment. No. What, what was going on with you with the glory cloud? Oh, the same. I had heard about it, you know, in yeah. history. I had heard about it, that sort of thing happening. I actually had friends that had that experience. And uh, and when it started happening, it actually started happening at our Friday night meetings uh, three weeks before I ever saw it happen. Mm -hmm. And then it just started happening on Sunday night. It would happen late in the evening mm -hmm. after most people had gone. And then it started moving up earlier. Earlier than and like so, some of our maintenance team would see it late in the evening, sort of deal. Yeah, or, yeah, okay, yeah. and they would, or, they, they would talk or the, about it, or, or, the, or our team that was uh, just finishing praying for people. Oh, okay, we on always the end, yeah, on yeah, the we Friday, always yeah. end with praying. Mm -hmm. So uh, it was happening then, and then it started moving up, and it started moving up towards the minute, the beginning of ministry time, and then eventually it started right at the beginning of the service. Yeah, and it was it was very, very unusual. Um, it just it just put an awe. Yeah. You know, it's like his world is breaking into ours. I, I don't know what he's saying. I don't know what he's doing. I, I, I don't usually say why. I, I just try to assign points to someone. Mm -hmm. You know, it's it's the exit sign points to the exit. Yeah. So yeah. we've got a, a sign of unusual presence that shows up. I want to I want to look to the one it's pointing to. Mm -hmm. and so that's what mm -hmm. we, we did. We would just extend our times of worship. We didn't. Worship the sign. We we also didn't ignore the sign. It's, it's, no, it's, it's, that's, yeah, it's powerful. Didn't worship it, it didn't ignore it. Yeah, yeah, it's it was there for a reason. Why? It just it it created an awe. In fact, I, I it happened twenty six times. I actually yeah. ended up counseling, yeah. counting over time. Mm -hmm. And and after about five or six times in, I I realized, man, I don't know what to do. Mm -hmm. I mean, he shows up in this way. I've heard of God showing up in ways in Chronicles where everybody's on their face, nobody can speak a word, do anything. Uh, we've had times where that awesome presence has been there and has, has been silence for mm -hmm. um, just about uh, 20 minutes, I remember at one point, which is an eternity in a, in a corporate gathering. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so we have those kinds of things, but this was different. There was a lightness, a joy, but an awe. And then I remember, I, I don't know what to do. And I didn't feel like I needed to perform something. I just want, yeah. to, resp I want to be a good steward. Yeah. And then I watched children, and children would run, because it would, it would often start in a corner, and children would run right into the middle of this cloud of his presence. And I thought, I'm, I'm just going to follow them. <laughs> mm -hmm. I'm just going to learn from the children, because mm -hmm. it's, it wasn't, God wasn't showing up in an intimidating way where you fall on your face. Biblical, appropriate. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah. Um, this was different. It, it was a welcoming presence, and children would run right into the middle of it. Uh, people would call their relatives, their friends who who weren't at the meeting, and they would come in their pajama bottoms, you know, and come yeah, in. That's true. And yeah. the children would, you know, would run towards this cloud of his presence, and it was uh, it was so remarkable. Mm -hmm. It was so remarkable. People's lives were so deeply impacted, but it's kind of those things. It's, it's one of those things. How do you talk about it? You yeah. know, I mean, yeah. I, I, I did finally. I did one yeah. meeting where I, I kind of walked people through it, you know, as best I knew how. But uh, it was new for you too. Oh, totally, yeah. <laughs> totally. Brent, well, yeah. and it hasn't happened uh, since, really. No. Uh, not nearly to the same level. No. Uh, uh, and uh, we're talking eight years ago, or yeah. you know, nine years ago yeah. now. So, yeah. and we didn't kind of. It wasn't something we prayed for to happen. It was just. Uh, Somehow mm -hmm. we were hungry. We were always living hungry and responsive. Yeah. And then when it quit happening, we didn't panic about that either because we weren't. Uh, it, it was always about the Lord. Yeah. Not not about the manifestations. Yeah. It doesn't mean he left. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. No. It doesn't mean his displeasure uh, on the group or yeah that somehow we quenched the Lord or anything. It's like no, no, no. Uh, not at all. I, uh, I I remember one one of our guys innocently put a, a thing out. You know, come see if the glory cloud will come tonight or something. 
and I found out about it. I said, oh, yeah, take yeah. that down. Yeah, on our Bethel on TV. Yeah, yeah because yeah, yeah. We, can't, we can't seek uh, recognition or in any way profit yeah. by attendance or whatever yeah. happens in church. We cannot use what God does for that. And uh, so I, I had him take it down. Yeah, <laughs> it scared it, yeah. me. It actually well, scared me. And the other, yeah, and I'm, I'm glad you did. The other thing, we, we had guys check, uh, open up the air conditioners just to make sure nobody had tampered with them. There was no uh, piece of insulation or something breaking down. Sure. Uh, you know, so we, you know, I, I don't mind, you know, trust and verify, right? That's a little Ronald Reagan quote. <laughs> but the uh, uh, it's like trust and then go, now let's make sure that we're not, you know, Breathing in toxic uh, insulation from the air conditioner <laughs> malfunctioning and calling it the Lord's glory. So, so we did go up there and look and didn't find anything that was breaking apart or that had been degraded. And then, but it's also it wasn't perpetual. It would happen in the meetings. We, it was it was the time when the air conditioner was running all day long, and so yeah. we're not seeing it all day long. And then at, at, at these meetings or particular times, we would yeah. we would kind of see the Lord's presence in that way. Um, you know, I. I was taken aback. Like, I had the same thing, a sense of awe, but I was totally taken aback by how, uh, this might be a description of the hardest in my heart sometime, but the, how easily it would be to turn my attention away from it. Like, go, oh, huh, all right. Because somehow I thought when the Lord would show up so dramatically, everybody would know it. Uh, you know, everybody would be yeah. on their face before the Lord. And not everybody's on their face. We're there, we are there's confusion, almost like Acts 2. Yeah, exactly. There's wonder, there's bewilderment. Yeah, yeah. People have their cell phones out. I remember like going, oh, you can't have your cell phone out filming. That's like, I'm like, well, I guess you can. And people are filming everything now. But like, I remember like, <laughs> you would just imagine that we would all be on our face, but it wasn't what the Lord did. I remember John and yeah. Carol are not there one night, and we were just sitting oh, there mystified and perplexed, but also. I was perplexed that it wasn't as mandatory. Like awe wasn't as mandatory yeah, as yeah. I thought it would be. It's almost like you could go to the Grand Canyon and go like, yeah, big hole in the ground. You know, like sort of thinking maybe that's just me, but the that I would thought the Lord's presence shows up. It's mandatory. But like, no, I could have gone like, this is fine. I, I could have not let it impress me, you know, let it let yeah. it move me if I so that was the part that was I was was striking for me and my like, who God is and how we experience the Lord. Yeah, it was overwhelming and subtle at the same time. Ah, yeah, well said. It was yeah. overwhelming. If you lean into it, you're just overwhelmed that he would do this. You know, one night it was real strong in one corner, and miracles just began to happen mm-hmm. uh, of healing mm-hmm. uh, in in that in that one corner. Mm-hmm. And it, you can just tell it's, it's just these waves of presence. And but the night with John and Carol, I mean, it, it was a cloud. Yes. That burst, and then I mean, it's just the hardest thing to understand. It's almost, okay. This is uh, maybe too transparent for the uh, you know for the internet, but the uh, <laughs> at that point, I was on that night because I was there that night. It was so undeniable and demonstrative. It's like this is either the Lord or like an evil magician. Is I mean, a trickster is in the room, an illusionist is in right, the room. Right, you know, right. like somehow you're shooting compressed air out of a secret. You know? <laughs> Yeah, spot right, because it was yeah. so, like it was, it was shocking. And so I was actually looking at the crowd, like, are there any tricksters or you know, like as I was trying to yeah, discern them. But yeah. I'm like trying to look and go, is, is there anybody manipulating this environment? And uh, there was none that I could see. I, it, I, the Lord was on. Don't get me wrong, I didn't have a scary uh, feeling about it, but it was so shocking. You're like, it, it, it hurts. It, it hurt the brain. Yeah. So it was like, and it's like a, when a when a guy makes a coin disappear. You're like, what? How'd that happen? Or yeah, yeah. you know, it gives you the card with your signature on it. You're like, that can't happen. And I was yeah. having a bit of that dissonance as well. Like, wow. unless there's, like, this has got to be the Lord or a master illusionist. And I'm like, no, of course I think it's the Lord. And we, we double-checked yeah. and checked again. And 26 times we need to look at it. But it was, it was it, it, I'm surprised it was that shocking. How much, I was doing that much brain work in that moment. You know, I was doing that much yeah. wondering and thinking. Interesting. And how much of an impact it had, not just in the, the awe of the Lord, but like, well, your ways are so mysterious. Like, why you come... During a meeting with the cloud that we all, you know, Scripture has describes a glory cloud, so that's like the phrase that we began to use because we didn't have a different one. Right, right. And it seemed more majestic than glitter cloud or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> and the Lord came in a glitter cloud. Like mm, that's not great, but the, <laughs> yeah. But it, but it's it was shocking again. Like the the if you're if you're out there thinking like no, when God does a miracle, it's gonna like no, you can actually walk away from it not be interested, say it was the demonic, like we yeah. see it in Scripture. Yeah. And so, again, it's this sign that can be denied that if you're hungry, you'll find the Lord, and if you're not, 
you'll just find more offense. It's true. Israel was fed with miracle food every day for 40 years, manna. Yeah. And they just got bored. Got mad about it. Got bored, yeah. <laughs> they saw the presence of God in a fire and a cloud over them as a, as a people, and it lost its impact. Yeah. And uh, so signs become... Boring is a wrong word, but I'll use it. Every day, they come commonplace. They commonplace. no longer move us. Yeah. Signs become common when you don't follow what the sign is pointing to. Yeah. And in this case, it's the person. He never becomes old. Yeah. He never becomes, it, there's never the absence of awe when you behold him, when you consider him. Um, so that's really what we worked hard to do during that season was just turn a heart to the Lord, enjoy the unusual thing that he was doing. Yeah. Don't try to figure it out. Just enjoy it. And uh, there were times where that cloud would fill from the front of the sanctuary all the way to the back, every corner. It was like equal. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And you don't see it fall. You only see it go up. It was mm -hmm. It was the, we have it on film. It just, yeah. Yeah. It just. where did it go? I don't know, but it, yeah. it just would go up. And yeah. I, I don't know. I, I couldn't wrap my head, but I, I did just stand there in awe. I remember standing talking to a friend and, while while talking to them, just seeing these pieces. Yes, and, the, the, and the, the childlikeness of that. And we're aware of other environments where oil has been manifested or, or gold, uh, you know, in yeah. various places, yeah, and, yeah. you know, manna. So it, it seems to be something that the Lord does yeah. uh, as a sign and a wonder. It, it does it does make you wonder. <laughs> yeah. And it is a sign. <laughs> yeah, that's right. And it's, so. I, I think we should be concerned if nothing happens. I don't mean mm -hmm. in every meeting, but yeah. I mean, if we live a life where we understand all that's going on, I may have reduced him to my size, yeah. and that's not good. I I have to serve someone who who is awe-inspiring constantly. Beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. So are we open to the Lord doing that again or some more or oh, something course. different? Or? Well, yeah, I, yeah. It didn't come by request. I didn't leave I, by request. I didn't leave by request. <laughs> I I am hungry for him to do what he pleases. Yeah. But having said that, I want to anticipate more. Mm. You know, I don't mm -hmm. want to leave it up to him because there's churches all over the world that are saying, I, I just want whatever God wants. Nothing happens. Yeah. yeah. So you have to lean in at some point with a promise, a testimony. You have to take a risk. Will he heal this person? Uh, is it possible for us to prophesy and get a, a word of wisdom for this individual? You have to press in sometimes, pursue mm. earnestly spiritual gifts. Sometimes there's that requirement yeah. to pursue. So that's that's a part but of it. But the hunger is manifest in a pursuit, in yeah. a risk-taking. Exactly, yeah. exactly. Yeah. yeah, it's an essential part. So I'm not going to measure our spirituality by whether mm -hmm. that glory cloud shows up again. That That wouldn't be fair for him or for us, because yeah. he may be doing something different. I just want more. Mm -hmm. I, I'm not looking to be wowed, but I am looking to be changed. Beautiful. And uh, that's that's it. Yeah, and, and we don't. Uh, I don't miss the glory cloud because I, I we have him, like his uh, his abiding presence <laughs> with exactly. us in the exactly. community in our own individual lives. So <laughs> I, I don't. I have him. I'm not missing the. That's actually how I recognized that it was from him. Mm -hmm. is because the, that presence that I encounter in my times with him alone, that's what filled the room. Wow. And so it, it wasn't, it was offensive in the sense that I don't understand yeah. it, but it wasn't yeah. offensive in the sense that I thought, well, what's going on? It, it wasn't that at all. It was like, this is the same. It's like uh, the road to Emmaus. They didn't recognize how Jesus showed up. Mm -hmm. And there are sometimes he shows up different. Yeah. But it, but when you you close your eyes, you get that sense of the presence of the Spirit of God. You go, okay, this is Him. Yeah. And and, and that's that's the that's the test for me, is what what of Him do I experience in my journey and my walk with Him? Mm -hmm. That is what has to train me for when I encounter new things. <laughs> 